So we, we have Mr. Donald Glover, who's uh, uh, reaching a bit of a drama online out, off of a couple tweets with uh, people really running away with what he said. Uh, we're getting headlines like this uh, that go even farther talking about, you know, Donald Glover worried about cancel culture. Oh, no. But uh, this one over here says uh, Donald Glover fear of getting canceled makes entertainment boring. Uh, let's skip to the actual things that he said. I saw people on here having a discussion about how uh, tired they were of reviewing boring stuff, TV and film. We're getting boring stuff and not even experimental mistakes because people are afraid of getting canceled. Excuse me. So they feel like they can only experiment with aesthetic also because some of them know they're not that good. Um, I'm kind of... Uh, <sighs> I, I, I want to give a really robust critique of what Donald Glover is saying here. But honestly, I, I think there's a lot of like running away with what Donald was uh, uh, saying exactly in this series of tweets. I don't necessarily read this. I mean, granted, there's a lot of boring TV and film out there. I, I don't disagree with that sentiment. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'll say like as far as like, mainstream releases of much of anything uh yeah a majority of it uh for as long as i can remember has been boring you have to sort of like work and put in the effort to find you know the really good stuff i mean good stuff does come out of the mainstream of you know all artistic mediums but like the truly good stuff and, and a lot of the times the influential stuff um, you've really got to kind of dig for it. You know, the stuff that's ahead of the curve, you have to actively search for it. Rarely uh, does the mainstream just be like, Harra! there it is. There it is. Is Immediately after it's come out. I don't mean like after it's already had a massive hype cycle and everybody's already fucking into it. And then finally it's like, oh, here you go. Here's that amazing thing everybody likes. I don't mean then. I mean like immediately out of the gate, totally obscure thing, greatest thing anyone's ever conceived. Brah! It, like rarely does that ever happen. Um, but uh, look, I, I, I don't necessarily read what he's saying here as uh, a, a cancel culture thing. I mean, given Donald Glover's art and the statements he makes in his art, like especially in the Atlanta series, he doesn't strike me as somebody who's like overly worried about cancel culture or being canceled or artists who are his contemporaries being canceled socially anyway. Uh, I mean, maybe he is, but it doesn't come across really clear here. I think maybe he's talking about like TV shows getting canceled because, look, I mean, TV shows, for the most part, follow a very strict formula. And uh, a lot of shows out there are not very experimental. Um, and, you know, if, if you have a show that's flopping, uh, traditional media doesn't really, like, you know, tend to wait it out for too long. You know, if a show's not doing well, shows get canceled after the first season, shows get canceled mid-season. And I imagine with things being the way that they are economically and uh, culturally in, you know, a business such as TV, or even like when you're talking about the digital side and going to Netflix, um, there can be a lot of pressure and expectations to have that hit fit into a certain, you know, sort of like archetypes that it appeals to a certain amount of people. And you can go on and continue to make the next thing. And even if you are that one person in the room who has like that great idea or like wants to change wants to do something different um in order to get to that process to see a project come to fruition especially in tv and especially in film where there are usually so many hands at play there are usually so many people involved from the start to an to the end of a project um even if you are that one person with that one great idea like you can't just make that idea come out of your head and just manifest physically in the real world you need to convince every single person who's working with you along the way to see the vision as you're seeing it and follow along with it and do everything that they can to sort of like make it come alive so you know when you're talking about like all of those barriers and obstacles to making something truly groundbreaking making something truly good um are we really like, you know, worried about cancel culture or are we worried about like the next project getting funded? Because, you know, keep in mind, like 
these tweets had been released in an era where Sia came out with that awful Sia, the singer Sia and songwriter uh, came out with that awful like music uh, autism movie that everybody freaking hated and people who are autistic felt that the movie's portrayal of autism was really insensitive and terrible and there were people like every step along the way that were like I don't know if this is a good idea I don't know if this is a good idea like there are tons of people connected to that film that after the fact said like uh, we, we kind of had our reservations with it it was it was uh, kind of weird uh, clearly, there were not enough people in the midst of that project that, <laughs> that were like, are we going to get canceled? Is, it, is this going to get us canceled? <laughs> um, I, I don't know if cancel culture is that huge of a worry if like the industry is still coming out with stuff like that. You know, if the, if the industry is still coming out with stuff like that, I, I don't know how much like we're really worried about cancel culture over here. I, I think Donald is... And, and, and again, given Donald Donald's political leanings, I mean, when you talk about or you see people talking about just like whining about cancel culture, cancel culture, cancel culture, they're usually whining about how they're not able to, I don't know, voice some horribly insensitive opinion or take that's like usually based in some level of like racism or sexism or something. And again, given Donald's political leanings and the statements he makes in his own art, I, I don't really know if like that's what he's worried about or that's what he's concerned about. And again, unless he's like explicitly using the terminology of cancel culture, um, you know, I'm not going to presume that that's exactly what he's talking about. Um, and, you know, again, the types of things that are associated with cancel culture in terms of like, uh, what people are getting canceled for per se, is that the sort of thing that if it were to be in a TV or in a film, would it make it less boring? Is that the sort of thing that we're like worried is not making it into TV and film now? Um, you know, I, I think that there's just sort of like a narrative uh, because of how, you know, a hot button of a topic cancel culture is these days. And, you know, any sort of publication out there is sort of incentivized to talk about it, frame things as cancel culture because it just like creates clicks and creates so much discussion and creates so much polarization. Um, I just sort of wonder if uh, this is truly like what he ended up meaning. Um, but, uh, you know, there's been quite a bit of discussion around this and Donald has access to his Twitter, I believe. Um, if he were being taken sort of out of context or if he were completely misunderstood, I would hope that he would come online and clear that up. But I, I really don't know. I really don't know exactly like what to make of this 100 percent, because I don't think he sort of goes into whatever criticism he's making here deep enough um, to, you know, really get to. Uh, uh, to the heart of what he may be trying to say here. I mean, again, there's like a lot of TV and film out there that's not particularly amazing, you know, but there are a lot of barriers to making uh, amazing TV and film. And, you know, some of the barriers could be just fear of getting, you know, your show canceled, fear of not moving on to the next project, fear of just having a bad project, you know, follow you for the rest of your career. Um, I mean, it's it's a legitimate worry. It's a legitimate worry, and I guess I uh, hope for not just in TV and film, but also in music where there's just sort of, you know, less barriers to uh, people's creativity and artists can just kind of make the sort of art uh, that they want to make without having to worry about uh, whether or not uh, is it going to be doing well commercially? Is it going to sell them a certain amount of copies? Is it going to get a certain amount of streams? Is it going to go this viral, that viral, the other fucking thing? Um, it would be great if, you know, people could sort of uh, uh, create uh, at all levels of popularity without having to worry about, you know, um, whether their next project is, is going to be the one that sort of makes or breaks them. You know what I mean? Um, I wish all artists sort of like had that uh, freedom to experiment. Um, but, uh, you know, we do live in a world, unfortunately, where there are social but especially very economic pressures um, that, you know, can hold down. Uh, certain types of creativity or expressions because uh, for, you know, whatever reason, uh, lack of familiarity, lack of it uh, just kind of getting a chance elsewhere. Um, certain things just like don't fly or sort of takes a, a certain amount of time for them to catch on. And uh, a lot of media companies, a lot of production companies uh, don't necessarily want to foot the bill 
you know, understandably so because, you know, they, they have their own bottom lines because uh, they have projects to get out. They have people to pay. They have, you know, bills to uh, pay off. Um, they don't necessarily want to foot the bill for getting the audience to a certain point where like, oh, yeah, this thing that you've now acclimated me to after years is the best thing I've ever seen or ever heard of. Whereas, you know, again, when you're sort of like presenting new ideas, breaking ground, doing something different, it could take time, you know, and, it, and it's often not the mainstream that, again, is sort of like throwing those things in front of your face and being the first there to those ideas. You know, what the mainstream wants to do is capitalize off of those ideas after they've gained ground, after they've gotten popular, after they've gotten big, after they've sort of already like, you know, proven their worth uh, with some kind of like, you know, cult following or organic grassroots following or something like that. So um, I, I guess ultimately I hope for better art, TV, film, music, uh, as Donald Glover does. But uh, I don't know if uh, uh, people have totally mis uh, totally understood or interpreted properly uh, what exactly he sees as the barriers to that. Um, and, you know, look, even if uh, he is talking about cancel culture here, most likely when it comes to preventing, you know, great art being released commercially, um, there are probably a lot of other factors at play too. Uh, Benny, thank you very much. Uh, there's probably so many other factors at play too. Um, other than just like, Oh, what if I get canceled? Ugh. But you know, those are my thoughts. Thank you very much for watching this clip on TND Streams. To see more, subscribe to the channel and also click on the video link next to my head. Also, make sure to check out our other YouTube channels linked down below to see everything else we do week to week. And yeah, that's it. Anthony Fantano, forever.